God doesn't answer vague prayers. Because it's vague. Like, how are you ever going to be able to gauge if God ever did anything? If you're like, God, please come through on my bills. Did you just get paid or did God come through? You know? Guys, I just keep going. Like, this, I just thought this was going to be a quick encouragement. And it just keeps on going from one thing to the next. I just want to encourage the crap out of you guys, I guess, tonight. And I didn't think I had anything to give. And I have, like, six things. It's crazy. Holy Spirit is really going. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Faith Walk with Michelle. It is a late Sunday evening. I have had a long day. Um, I almost didn't pop on here. I was almost about to add something that I've recorded earlier last week and I never posted it. It just didn't really sit well with me. And then I felt like the Lord saying, what do you know? That's encouraging. Share it with the people. And then I'm just going to let the Lord, the Holy Spirit speak through me. I've got my glasses on. My contacts are off already. I'm wearing my Sedona t-shirt ready for bed almost guys I haven't washed my face or anything but I'm almost ready for bed this thing glows in the dark too it's pretty hilarious because they only had like kid sizes left and I thought it was actually pretty cool that it glows in the dark so fun facts about Michelle um and I'm also drinking my well-rested herbal tea again it's a uh, almost eight o'clock at night here. I don't know why I was gonna show you guys the tag. But in the well-rested tea, I was actually looking at the ingredients list. I have a little cutout from the box. I had like a little tea chest and I like to keep like what's in the tea. Um, Cause I just keep the well-rested tea stock. So I just like cut this little snippet off of the box. Don't ask, but this is why I have it this way. Um, so it's ingredients are chamomile, lemongrass, pretty normal, spearmint, pretty normal, right? Tilia flower, peppermint's pretty normal in this, passion flower, blackberry leaf, orange blossom, hawthorn berry, and rose petal. This has some pretty cool, interesting ingredients that are not in normal sleepy time tea. And they're like, they're like leaves and petal, like blackberry leaf and orange blossom. Like that's so cool. Passion flower, tilia flowers. Like I think that's probably really good for you because there's a lot of like plant leaves and stuff that are good for uh, minerals into your body and just relaxing all the things. I'm just like, I'm going to look every single one of those up later. But before we get in, I just want to invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I just ask God that after this long Sunday of yes, church, but so much running around and conversations and everything that you would just help me to focus and to have a Holy Spirit led video that really encourages people. I want you speaking through me, not me speaking from just my own head knowledge and things that I think. I want you to be inspired through this video. We invite you into this space in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Okay, so my main encouragement um, is inspired from Ephesians 3.20. I've been seeing it everywhere. So if I forgive me if you've seen this on your YouTube and Instagram reels and TikTok even like I have been seeing this everywhere but I, I saw it for myself and then I just saw it repeated everywhere over and over again so I know that the same Holy Spirit that lives in me also lives in all of his children so I find it like not necessarily surprising that the same things that I'm getting in my own quiet time I'm seeing other Christian influencers repeating. It's not a bad thing, you guys. That's actually really cool. Um, but I just don't want to do like a repeat inspiration. Like I want this to be Holy Spirit inspired. So even if you've heard this verse a ton, like it's coming from a different perspective, from a different person with a different heart, um, at a different time in her life. So either way, Ephesians 3:20 in the NLT version says, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And so there's other cool translations I'm moving over so I can kind of prop them up on the side here. I, I don't have the type of screen to, sorry for the glare on my glasses. I have, these are just like over the counter, like target optical, whatever glasses, like they're just readers. And so they just don't have that shine blocker, the blare, whatever, which is totally fine for me to see and read with, but for people to see me, it kind of creates a shine. Sorry. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put over here a different translation because I feel like whenever I quote it, like, uh, last Sunday, not this Sunday, I was on prayer team and I was, I, I just by memory always quote that God is able in his mighty power to do infinitely more than we might ask, think, or imagine. And I was trying to find a translation that says that 
exactly. But what I was finding is different compilations of that, like some things say ask or think, and then some, some things say that he'll be able to do, accomplish infinitely more than we might imagine. Um, so I think in my mind, I must have combined infinitely more than we might ask, think, or imagine. So it's not necessarily uh, a mistran, it's, it's not any, any Bible translation, it's just a compilation of things. It's even like with my favorite verse, 2 Timothy 1.7. Um, I always like to quote it in like the full range. Um, so some translations say, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Some translations say, for God has not given us a spirit of uh, timidity, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I love every variation of that life verse. Um, so I'll often quote, quote it or pray over it from people that God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Um, I do like self-discipline, but it's not as like sexy of a word as sound mind, because I do feel like, especially in this generation, that having um, that quote prayed over you to have a sound mind is is so like refreshing because I do think that there's like this weird, stupid, I didn't think I was gonna go off on a tan about, tangent about 2 Timothy 1, 7, but there is a, um, a weird stigma around having a healthy mind, like taking care of your body, going to the gym, physical health is normal, right? But taking care of your mental health is, there's some stigmas around it. And I think that that's so stupid because your mind needs to be supported. And I think that it just is showing that like, we need to have healthy, happy thoughts that are leading to life, life-giving thoughts and not negative, self-deprecating uh, death thoughts. And that's why the enemy is toys with our mind. And I think that's why I'm, one of my favorite books um, that I've read multiple times is the book by Joyce Meyer, Battlefield of the Mind. And there's a lot of books on think on these things, Philippians 4, 8, I spoke about it last week, um, how to have the mind of Christ and just, you know, all of that, like think on the wonderful things, think on heavenly things, all of that. But um, those are all things that are reminding us that God is saying like, there is a battlefield of the mind. And so there's a lot of books on the mind, and I think that they're all great, but there's something about the way that Joyce Meyer wrote her book. It's very simple. It's very matter of fact. She relates it back to herself, just like she does in her word for word teaching. Um, but it, it resonated with me so well. I bought the study guide for myself. I didn't do the study guide with other people. I just did it by myself multiple times. Um, and and it, it really created like a, um, a leap forward. So I feel like you're always needing to go back and renew your mind and think on the things of God, think think on things that are good and true and have a good report, excellent report, um, things that are, that are excellent and worthy of praise. Like God is saying, think on these things. So bad things are happening, but we shouldn't ruminate on them. I think that's basically what um, I've taken away. And so there's always times when you have to go back to that truth, the spiritual milk, um, and do it again you know, maybe reread it again, but there was something in, in those times when I read it two or three times within uh, a year or two that, um, something just like really leaped forward for me in my mindset. And, um, I think the enemy lost a lot of his stronghold in my mindset. And so I just encourage you guys to find a book that works for you. I know Craig Rochelle has a really good one. Um, I forget what, I think it's something like Mind Wars. I'll have to link it down below. I want to be helpful to you guys on that. But either way, I just think it's it's been so encouraging for me to remember that God wants to, because people are telling me like, you know, think, pray, pray bigger prayers, like on Ephesians 3.20, you know, pray bigger prayers. Like God wants you to ask more of him. He's not afraid of your, your prayer request. Like if you have something that's bigger than you, good, because that means that you require divine intervention. Um, this book, this prayer book that we just finished reading with my small group uh, called The Circle Maker, you know, he says, God doesn't answer vague prayers because it's vague. Like, how are you ever going to be able to gauge if God ever did anything? If you're like, God, please come through on my bills. Did you just get paid or did God come through? You know, and so sometimes like, if you ask for this, God might give you this because it says that you could even imagine. So... <sighs> I think that's so cool to think about. I think that's so cool to like really meditate on that. Like I might ask God for this and God's like, girl, you're thinking that you want this and that's so good, but I want to give you this. I have, I've seen this little like cute meme. I've even seen people put it on t-shirts where it's like, 
your plan is like a beautiful sunflower. And then on the other side, it's like God's plan. It's like a bouquet of sunflowers. And um, just really leaning into that truth. Like pray your prayers. Pray very specific, big, bold prayers. Like lean into the things that are the desires on your heart already. You know, and then let God surprise you with infinitely more than you might ask or think or imagine. Every single prayer hit the heart of God. Every single one. Okay, this is another one. I'm going to see if I can add it in here somewhere. Maybe I can add it in here. There's this cool... Uh, like a little mini reel of this guy with arrows, um, little, little arrows. Yeah. And he's like throwing them at the dart, the bullseye and it's missing, it's missing, it's missing. So finally he just gets frustrated he takes all of them and he throws them all at the, the bullseye and they all just fly right past the bullseye. He gets frustrated and he walks away and then the screen pans out and you see that there is a bullseye here, but then there's all these other bullseyes and all of his arrows hit every, every single bullseye. And I think that's the way our prayers are. It's like you were praying, God, I want to see this happen by this year. And God's like, I, I bullseye hit my heart, but it's going to happen in five years. <laughs> you know, thinking about all the things that we pray, like, I just want things for me. But God's like, I want you to be an influence for my kingdom. God's not always just thinking about you. He's thinking about the whole kingdom and, and, and he's, you know, kingdom mentality is what we should have as well. You know, we're thinking about like, I just want this just so that I'm comfortable in life. And he's like, girl, boy, guy, I want you to have so much more. He's always thinking of more than just you. How are you, if he blesses you, how are you going to increase the kingdom of God? While we're waiting for, for prayers to be answered, keep on praying, ask, seek, knock. And I don't think that that means that that ask and keep on asking, pray and keep on praying is is so that he can hear us, that we're knocking and God's not hearing. No, uh, that story about the, the persistent widow that she just kept asking the, the unjust judge. And he says, um, Jesus was telling the story and, he, and the unjust judge was like, I don't even care about people, but this woman is going to bug me to death if I don't just go ahead and do what she's asking me to do. So I will go ahead and do what she's asking me. God is not that unjust judge who doesn't care about people. She just kept knocking and knocking and coming and coming and asking and asking and pleading. But the, the, the moral of it is to keep on asking persistence. And it's more for us because w w we pray once and we don't see it. Um, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So you're putting your place, you're putting your heart back into that position of asking, 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 keep on asking. And sometimes when you, when you, when you pray and you're like really praying in the spirit, sometimes you'll get new things from the Lord about that thing that you've been asking for, for years, but you have to keep yourself in a posture, in a position to receive it by faith. Because if you start doubting, if you stop praying and you prayed it once, twice, five times, I mean, maybe you prayed it a hundred times over a year or two and you just gave up, but it's like walking around the walls of Jericho. What if they gave up walking the sixth or seventh time around. If you trust that God's heart is for you, if you trust that what is in the written word of God is true, then you can trust that you can ask for that prayer until it seems like you're not, you, like it's never going to happen. God's heart is for you. And it's maybe even start asking God, please reveal to me what I can be praying into. What are you doing in the meantime? Like start asking God, maybe you'll get dreams and visions and things. But if we don't keep on asking and praying, our heart is going to start to just let that thing die or pull away or, you know, it's too frustrating to pray for anymore. I don't know how to keep asking the same thing in different words. Well, then find different words. Say, you know, I was praying for this person's salvation to come back to the Lord, whatever. So Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would give me a new heart for them, that you would give me an understanding of what you're doing. What are you doing? Um, what new word can we speak? What What is happening? Like, please reveal something new to me. And there's another verse that I'll, I feel like a lot of people have been quoting lately, and it's um, like, your head will be swimming. Everything is happening so fast. And um, let me look it up. Okay, so I think it's in verse 13, and it must be in the message translation where it says, um, there'll be right upon the heels of the other, like the harvest, the grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested, right? And it says something along the lines of like right upon the heels of the other and it'll be so fast your head will swim. And so it's like just saying like there's gonna be a harvest so great that it's gonna be happening so fast, faster than you could imagine that your head will swim with the blessing. Sometimes God does that, you know, sometimes he'll just like expedite a blessing to you and it's just gonna happen so fast, so many different things happening all at once. 
that your head is going to swim. And um, I just think it's just don't pray small prayers. That's my encouragement to you. Ephesians 3.20 was the original uh, encouragement of the night um, that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. God is able in his mighty power to do infinitely more than we could ask, think, or imagine. I hope you take that into your prayer closet. I hope you meditate on that truth. Repeat it back to yourself as many times as you need to for that truth to like really sink in. And sleep so well. God is so for you, guys. If you have been going through some stuff and feeling down about yourself or bad about yourself or it feels like nobody understands, God knows that you've been through, that you think that you're horrible. That's the devil. That's straight from the pit of hell. Anything that you have done, if you've asked God's forgiveness, it's immediately forgiven. Now you just need to work on forgiving yourself. As often as that comes up, whatever it is, submit it to God. Give it to the Lord. Because repentance is the way that you're going to keep shame off of you. And shame is going to keep you in a repetitive cycle of repeating certain things. It's going to keep you in a sin cycle. It might not be the same thing. It's just going to keep you in a sin cycle because you're feeling shameful. You're not good enough. You're bad. So might as well just sin again. It's a subconscious thing. It feels like it's 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 um, biblical. So remember, as often as the thing that you're thinking of is coming to mind, give it to the Lord and say, Lord, this isn't mine anymore. You forgave me. What Jesus did on the cross is enough. I'm giving this back to you again and again and again and again and again. And really let the, invite the Holy Spirit into that. Because once you let the Holy Spirit into that, it just eradicates the depth. It can start just pulling out the root of that thing. And the Holy Spirit can even start bringing to mind maybe like why, where the root is. Give it back to God. So don't feel bad about yourself. Believe in your heart that God wants to give you infinitely more than all that you can ask, think, or imagine. Because you are a child of God. You've asked for forgiveness. You are redeemed. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay? And your identity is hidden in the perfect Heavenly Father. On this Father's Day, just believe that even if you had the best dad, you had a great dad. You, even if you didn't have it, I'm just saying, like, in, in this example, let's say that you had the best dad. Even if you had the best dad, he is still going to fall infinitely short from the perfect Heavenly Father. Okay? So you need to know the perfect Heavenly Father. Because... Your great dad who was there at all your games, who was there for all of your big events, and he encouraged you, he saw your he saw your highlights, he spoke about the things that you were doing really well when you were really struggling, he came to you. He still wasn't able to help you with your emotional tr tr struggles with yourself. Like, even if he was great, he's not with you as close as the Heavenly Father is. And he's still a human being, so I just know. You know, so even if you, you don't have a dad, you were adopted or anything like that, just think about that. Even if you have the best dad in the world, he's still not going to be as great as the Heavenly Father is. So you being able to have the opportunity to be adopted into the family of the kingdom of God and have your Heavenly Father. Guys, I just keep going. Like this, I just thought this was going to be a quick encouragement and it just keeps on going from one thing to the next. I just want to encourage the crap out of you guys, I guess, tonight. And I didn't think I had anything to give and I have like six things it's crazy holy spirit is really going um but it's just things I was thinking about today as I was driving to church because it's father's day just like just, just know that like don't let that cripple you of like I didn't have my dad or my dad was taken away from me early or I was adopted I never knew him what if he was a great person even if he was the best dad He's still going to fall short of the perfect heavenly father. You have the opportunity to have the best dad in the universe. And it says, what, what good parent or what good father would give their child a stone if he asked for bread or a snake if he asked? Or I don't know, something like that along those lines. Like the heavenly father wants to give you <laughs> more than what you ask for, babe. If you ask for a, a loaf of bread, you ask God for help with this. He wants to give you more than that, okay? Ugh. Jesus broke the bread and the fish and thanked God for it.
And he just wanted to feed the people that were seated. And the first time that this, this miracle happened with the hungry people and sitting down in, in groups of 50, there was 12 baskets remaining. And the second time that this happened, there was even more remaining. I don't remember exactly. But the second time, God was able to provide, and he provided more than what was needed. Guys, I'm preaching to myself a little bit right here, right now. I just think it's so cool to think about how good God is to his children. And he's never late. He's always right on time. And you know what I think about? Is how when you're waiting for some someone to come, like let's say you invite them to something that's supposed to start at 12. At 11.59, they're still not late because it's 12 o'clock is when the event is. But you're sitting there like, where are they? Come on, like let's, let's, let's go. The event starts at 12. We gotta go, we gotta go. It's 11.59. And God shows up on time at 12. And we're impatient people. We wanna see you coming up right now but God shows up on time at 12 o'clock on the nose and he does that on purpose so that he can show up in your situation and show off because your anxiety got the best of you you told so many people you basically built up this platform of so many people to see you get blessed okay <laughs> and he shows up in a way that only God can do he loves to show up and show off and he's always on time never late don't forget it all right. Um, I hope that this enhances your prayer life this week until next week when I will have another word. God always gives me something. He is faithful. You guys, I pray for you all the time. I hope you're blessed. Please like, comment. I love your guys' comments. Um, and of course, subscribe. Stay part of the family and so that um, you, know, you can stay connected to this faith walk. Bye for now. Be blessed until next Sunday.